I, I think it's time to get started. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to this session. Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, data engineering uh, career path. Um, so we invited uh, two speakers uh, who are WeCloud Data's Data Engineering Bootcamp alumni. Uh, they will be sharing their experience, um, either doing a career switch or a role switch in the same company. Um, and before we get started, I just want to let everyone know that we just dropped uh, the new data engineering career guide uh, for 2023. This is probably the most comprehensive data engineering career guide you will find on the internet. Um, so allow me to spend one minute to guide you through this, you know, career guide. I'll share the link with you as well. Uh, let me send it to Zoom chat. Okay, so uh, in this career guide, uh, we introduce uh, data engineering, uh, and then we also talk about data engineer, uh, what the role is about. Uh, we talk about career path, the job market, and also um, we discuss the learning path uh, in, uh, in a lot of details uh, and also share some of the, the tips on how to build a portfolio project. So I'll spend a couple of seconds on each one of these pages to, uh, to help you understand what we uh, have created for you. Um, so in the what is data engineering section, uh, we will introduce, uh, you know, the, the overall like end to end data engineering process right from data collection to ingestion, uh, data storage, transformation, uh, data pipelines, automation, and also data governance. Uh, so very high level overview and we'll discuss them in detail when we uh, introduce the learning path. Uh, and then we would talk about, uh, you know, can data engineering job be automated? Uh, and then we move on to talk about the traditional data engineer and also the modern data engineering. Um, introduce different roles uh, and also different tool stack. Uh, so I think these are some of the things, uh, but, you know, aspiring data engineers will need to know. Um, I think one of the speakers today, Hamza, he's actually working as an analytics engineer. So the modern data stack is very popular right now. Uh, five trend air by DBT, things like reverse ETL. Uh, so we cover some of these concepts and also we cover data lake house and big data uh, and serverless data engineering. So I think these are the three uh, trends in data engineering nowadays. Um, and then we move on to introduce um, data engineer um, career. Uh, so we talk about, you know, so in the, in the data engineering introduction, we introduce the end-to-end -end workflow, but then we'll talk more about uh, what data en engineers actually do for data collection, data ingestion. Um, so you'll find a lot of details and hopefully you can use this as a, you know, as a guide uh, on, uh, you know, how to uh, stay on the right track when you're uh, venturing into the data engineering world. Um, and then in a career path, we talk about some of the potential path. You can go down as, um, as a data engineer, uh, whether it's, you know, staff engineer, senior lead engineer, or if you want to go down the managerial path, um, sometimes data engineers switch to data science, um, switch to software engineer as well. So um, hope you'll find these useful. Um, in the job market session um, section, uh, I think we provided some of the latest status on the job market, average salaries, uh, you know, for data engineers in the U.S. and Canada. Um, years of experience requirement based on the data we collected from uh, from Indeed and LinkedIn. Um, yeah, it will be a, a good read for you. And uh, I guess the most useful part in this career guide is actually how to get started. Um, so in the learning path page, uh, we introduce WeCloud Data's data engineering curriculum um, to everyone. So if you want to self-learn, you know, become a self-made data engineer, you can follow this structured curriculum. Um, so we cover, you know, some of the important topics um, and cover, you know, fundamentals, what you should be learning. Um, and we introduce analytics engineering in detail as well. So the kind of databases you need to learn, data warehouse, um, how to work with connectors, ETL, ELT, DBT. Um, and then we move on to big data engineering, where we cover distributed system, data lake. Um, yeah, but some of these are uh, very exciting, you know, tools and technologies that I think data engineers will need to learn uh, and grasp. And then we also provided some uh, uh, portfolio project presentation uh, done by our alumni in the past. So I hope you guys uh, find this useful. 
All right. Now, <clears throat> back to uh, our main topic. Uh, we, we will be introducing um, the panel discussion. Uh, so I'll introduce the, the panelists, uh, and then we prepare eight to nine questions. If you have any uh, uh, questions, feel free to send them to Zoom chat. I'll make sure that we uh, address those questions. Quick introduction to WeCloud Data before we get started. Um, so we are Data Science and Analytics Learning Academy. Uh, we have data science boot camps and diploma programs. Um, future cohorts start in March and April. Uh, we also have business intelligence and data analytics program. Um, if you're not that you know into machine learning and math, um, BI and data analytics will be a you know a good option. And we of course have data engineering boot camp. Um, so the next cohort actually starts this month at the end of the month, and it's a six months part time program. Uh, and we cover a lot of uh, uh, the core technologies that you know we mentioned in the data engineering career guide. And if you come from a machine learning background uh, or data science, we also have uh, an AI engineering diploma program where we cover MLOps and also computer vision and natural language processing. All right, that's my quick intro. Uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce the speakers, um, Laura and Hamza. So they both graduated from uh, you know, our data engineering bootcamp uh, last year, uh, or maybe the year before last year. And um, Laura is currently, uh, uh, I think, uh, working on machine learning operations and also data engineering at TELUS. And Hamza, Hamza is uh, an analytics engineer. Uh, he recently, uh, I think, became analytics engineer. He used to work in uh, BI. Um, so yeah, I, I think uh, you'll find, uh, hopefully, you know, the perspective they bring into uh, this conversation uh, will be helpful to everyone. Hey, Laura. Hey, Hamza. Now, I think it's time for you guys to uh, do a quick self-introduction, uh, you know, and introduce yourself. And we would love to learn a little bit more about your current job uh, as a data engineer or MI engineer. Hi. Uh, can you hear me okay? I think so, right? Okay, cool. So, yeah. So, my name is Laura. Um, talk a little bit about me. So my background, I started Telos as a data analyst. So I switched my career from data analyst to ML engineer. Um, and yeah, and then right now I'm working as an ML engineer. And um, I would say like, I am super happy <laughs> with what I do right now. And this course, uh, this book can help me a lot. Thanks, Laura. So you're not really, you didn't really switch job, right? So you stayed with the same company, but you switched your uh, your role. That's my understanding. Yes, exactly. So yeah, I was a data analyst. And then when I joined the bootcamp, I, actually everything happened at the same time. So when I joined the bootcamp, at the same time, I switched to another team. And this team was an AI team, but I was I supposed to be a data analyst there. And then as I was doing already my data engineer bootcamp, and I was interested in going more in this side. Uh, the team was giving me the opportunity like to take a little bit more of my uh, of engineering side, not only the data analysis. So, so yeah, so I started like taking care of the tables for the data scientists, um, creating like the feature store and automating everything. So, so that's how I started. And then when I finished the bootcamp, like I think a month later, then my, my, my manager gave me the opportunity to like to, to switch totally to a ML position. So then taking care of the infrastructure and then like working more with APIs, because um, uh, that's the way we do like to deploy machine, machine learning models. So now, now my job is end to end. So since the tables um, creating of the, the bringing new features for the data scientists, they, they create their models and then we go in and deploy this machine learning model to production, creating like APIs and making everything in an automated way. Cool. Thanks, Laura. Uh, Hamza, how about you? So, hi, I am Hamza. So, I guess my background first. So I, I used to be a chemical engineer, worked as a process engineer for four years. 
but then I was just tired about the lack of innovation in field. It was pretty same every day. So, so, but I got introduced to data in that field. I was doing like some troubleshooting and chemicals and all that stuff. I wanted to change my field, but have no idea how to do it. Uh, so the first thing that came into my mind was to do a certificate from EDX, uh, which is an online website uh, from Harvard. So I, I did a data science certificate uh, from there, but in the end, I even after doing that certificate, I had no idea how to get from that just certificate to the job. Like that link was missing. And that's when I decided, okay, I've already spent like six months, eight months trying to learn myself. And that's how I got to figure out that there are there's a boot camp that I can take in data engineering. Uh, I was slowly starting to develop interest in data engineering, starting to know what it is. I did my boot camp uh, in, to, uh, in 2021. And then using that boot camp and skills I gained, I got my first job as a data analyst uh, in properly. And year after, I decided that I want to do a little more of data engineering, and that's how I got my second job, which is analytics engineering in two cows. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background, so I will give you two things, what two cows does. So it's B2B platform, so consumers might not know a lot about it, but it's do domain registrar. We have a telecommunication uh, service as a software, software as a service, SaaS product. And we have internet and phone products in in US. And what I am responsible for is the transformation part of the ETL. So I do data modeling. I use Stitch to get data loaded into into our Snowflake the warehouse, and then take it to use DBT to model it, and then give it to the end users in the end, so that they can use it and make decisions out of it. So that is kind of my current job right now. That's awesome. Thanks for the self introduction, guys. Let's move on to the second question. So, uh, what was the biggest challenge uh, during your uh, career uh, switch or role switch? Um, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, my career switch, my role switch was a little bit uh, different, but um i would say first for me it was like the boot camp uh is teaching us more about aws and i work with gcp so but it's good like have knowledge into different clouds but yeah for me it was a little bit difficult to know uh, what was happening in gcp um but more than that i would say i think the biggest biggest challenge for me is not uh, it's not having the knowledge the, the correct knowledge the basic knowledge about programming <laughs> so i i recommend you like to learn code how to code since the beginning um i think there will be more questions about it so yeah so for me, the biggest challenge is coding, like programming, and and then um, yeah, this is like this basic knowledge. For me, it's something that I, I missed a lot in the beginning. Cool. So I, I guess you struggled a bit with uh, program at the very beginning, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. How long do would you say like? Take uh, it, it took you to to get more comfortable with programming. Was it during the boot camp or is it after the boot camp? You know, at work that uh, you apply more programming now. Yes, I, I would say like after um, when I really have like problems to solve, and then and then I have to solve by myself, right? Because like the boot camp is not the the idea is not it's not focusing the in the code itself right so there will be people explaining giving to you the code and explaining the code for you but for me I, I think I, I really learned it when I had a problem and I had to solve that by myself um, and I think that's why it's important like when people say to you that like, start doing projects work like 
uh, doing projects and your portfolio that's a that's I think it's the best way to learn because you'll be solving problems by yourself. Cool. Thanks, Laura. I, I still remember um, the group project presentation you guys did. It was pretty impressive. Um, I think the three of you guys worked in a team. Um, Hamza, how about you? So I guess for me, uh, because I was not even in the tech field, uh, it was a uh, it was quite challenging. And I would say the biggest challenge was to, so you can find jobs of data. If you want to be a data engineer, you go to LinkedIn and you search for data engineering job. And then you start seeing that they're asking for one plus years of experience in this tool, two plus years of experience in this tool. In internet, in YouTube, you can find those tools. You can learn all about those tools, but what does two years of experience mean? Like, I. I have no clue. Like so, basically reading the job and then converting, converting into what I have to do to get that job was quite difficult because it's always it's not very clear what they really want, uh, and even the tools that you want to learn, you don't know how deep you want to go into them because again, I don't know if I learn all of the airflow, which is impossible to do, but how much do I learn? Uh, so. I guess without the bootcamp, that would be something that I wouldn't be able to figure out uh, is how much do I have to learn, what skills are needed, what tools work in synergy. So I should learn this and this together because I'm most probably going to get a job where these two tools are coming together. So so just just identifying that whole thing, I think, was was the biggest challenge for me. Cool. Thanks, Hamza. Um, well, let's move on to this third question. Uh, why did you pick bootcamp over other learning options? I think you touched on this a little bit already. Hamza, maybe you can go first. Okay, so uh, so again, my problem was that uh, I was looking at uh, online resources. There are just too many resources out there. They they ask you to do a lot of things, and I already spent a year trying to figure out what I should learn. Uh, using those uh, those guides that I see online. And it was just so difficult and overwhelming to figure out how can I get a job in the end? Like I, I can learn all that, but does that mean I will get a job? And there was no track record attached to those learning options saying, you know, there are this many people uh, learned from here and this many people got job or anything like that. So I think bootcamp, what it did in six months, I had to work super hard uh, to learn a skill, but in the end, I got out like I was able to turn it into a job. And I think the other options was too, too yeah, the list was too long, too scattered, and they were not ending up in a job in the end. I don't know how to get a job using those learning options. So that was why I use pick bootcamp. Thank you. Um, Oh, sorry. <laughs> Can I go? No, go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I agree with Musa. Like, why I did pick a bootcamp? Because I, I research a lot. When I decided um, that, okay, that's what I want to do. I went to, when I learned about the engineer, actually, I didn't know about the engineer before. So when I started to look like oh, what this person is uh, will be doing, there is if you Google it, there is a roadmap for the engineer, and then like <laughs> you miss like, there are so so many tools, so many. It's it's, and then I try to list all of them and try to. I think I try to organize myself to learn itself. It's of the tools in the list, and I was like, okay, I can do it. I'm maybe I'm not so organized. Um. I am not so good learning by myself all these things, so I decided. Okay, I, I think I prefer like. Um, I think I would prefer a bootcamp because then they have that the knowledge I need to know organized, and there will be like TA sessions. There will be a uh, a teacher, and then I can ask questions, and there will be other people, colleagues, and then we can ask and learn together. So I think. That's why I I, I pick a, a boot camp. It's because I needed that 
the whole curriculum organized for me and then you know in, in a place where i can ask questions and and it makes sense like uh, be able to really understand everything connect all the dots and then yeah and then be able to say like okay i'm understanding this i understand this technology technology here and yeah that's why <laughs> thank you Next question. Um, do you have any suggestions on how to get started with uh, <clears throat> data engineering? Uh, now that you've gone through the boot camp, you've you know switched to data engineering or ML engineering, um, and also both of you are you know helping us uh, on the teaching side right now. Um, so you mentor students and work with students on solving uh, challenges uh, during their their learning you know phase. Um, any any suggestions for our audience who? Who would like to get started with data engineering? I guess I can go first. Uh, I would say, and I think Laura would say that uh, as well, is SQL and Python. So definitely those are the two things. Make sure you are learning those, uh, you know uh, those two languages because they are quite common in data engineering. So it's always good to have a good fundamental understanding of what's happening, how to do things in it and things like that. The second thing I would say, I would say is to use resources and, I, and, and Shava just showed us a resource that uh, that we cloud data just uh, just shipped or any go to any website and see what tools are are popular go to job go to LinkedIn see what tools are getting repeated again and again and start learning those tools and I would recommend to not like Try to see how many years of experience or things are needed in each tool and that's how you determine how much depth you need in that tool so if some job is saying airflow is one year don't go too deep but if it says python programming is three years now you have to go very deep into it so so that's how you figure out how deep you have to learn a certain skill and then just just once you have all that done put it in the resume and start applying jobs because applying jobs you would have failure at the first stance where you're just learning how to get your resume done and all that stuff. And then after that, you will start seeing, okay, I get one interview, then you will fill the interview round. So, so make sure you're applying jobs with the sense that you would fail first, and then hopefully you will figure it out in the end. So that would be my suggestion. Yeah, I totally agree with that. So yeah, first thing, like learn, Python, probably Python, and then, yeah, and SQL, like, I think you need to have, like, this basic knowledge. Um, I would add also, like, shell script, know what is a, what is a script? Like, I didn't know that before, before the bootcamp, so I, I really didn't have the basic knowledge. Uh, the bootcamp will give that to you, but at the same time, it's something you need to spend some time to learn. Um, and that's super useful. Like I use that all the time when working. Um, and what else? Yeah, I would I would also say like learn a little a little bit about Linux. Um, and start learning about the data structure, right? So, if you want to be like a data engineer and you are interested in applying, and you started this boot camp, so you need to know what you'll be doing, right? So there are so many resources out there, so so many things to read. So start to read about it, about it. So what the data engineer is doing. Um, so this is for starting learning the AHD, right? So I don't know if learning tools before, so. If you be applying to a bootcamp, you'll be learning the tools and maybe you'll be a little bit overwhelmed. So I would say like, try to focus on the basic things, right? So programming, a little bit of Linux, scripts, and then read what a data engineer does and, and start learning like, or read about cloud if you don't know what is cloud, right? So that will be, uh, I work like 100% with cloud. So, I think it's something it's super useful and you can start learning before um, the bootcamp starts. Thank you. Cool. Uh, let's move on to question five. 
Uh, can you tell us about your data engineering, uh, like the, the portfolio project you did during the bootcamp? Sure, I, I guess I can go first. So data engineering projects that we did. So, uh, so I built with my team a batch. So the first step is to, uh, in the midterm, we have to build a batch pipeline. So we basically take a, uh, take an API or CSV or whatever, and then we write the whole code to make sure we clean it, we process it, and put it into the data warehouse in the end. So, so we built a whole end-to-end -end project where we uh, took the data, and as soon as data arrives, everything is triggered. So you can get those results in the end in a visualization that you can see and say, okay, so this is the new data, and this is what this data is about. Uh, so it was pretty cool when I when we built it because it's like oh, I can just use put one CSV file, wait for a few minutes, and there is all visualizations ready for me. So that was the first project uh, I worked on, and the second project that we worked on was uh, the streaming process. So now we are saying that instead of giving a CSV uh, and 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 analyzing it, why don't we give it something streaming like Twitter API where there are tweets coming all over the place uh, and you pick a topic from a tweet saying like for example uh, world cup or something and then using that topic you can create visualizations like how many matches were there how many uh, how many tweets sorry how many tweets are there uh, and what is happening in that whole whole world cup topic so and that becomes way more interesting because you can sleep on it at night and in the morning you have a certain visualization ready that tells you exactly what happened in Twitter about that topic at night. So, so that was my, our second project. So that's what I worked on. Yeah, for me, it was pretty, pretty much the same. Um, yeah, but my, my second project was not about Twitter, it was about the bus. Um, was I, so I don't know if you know, the streaming data is like real time data. So data is coming real time from the API and then that will be going to a database and then and then we connect like a tool for visualization and then you can see the, the data, like uh, the numbers increasing. So it's pretty cool. Like uh, when you see everything connected and you can see like the data flowing to the pipeline, it's, that was a good feeling. And then I think at that time I realized, okay, so that's the way, like, then I can visualize in my work, how the data is coming there because um, before the bootcamp, I didn't know, right? So, okay, so that's the way they are doing, they probably they are doing it. Then I tried to investigate actually what they are doing at, uh, in my work. And also, we learn how to work with GitHub, uh, which is another uh, super important tool. So we work with GitHub in, in my work too. So I, I just try to to find their code there and read the code, how they're doing stuff. So yeah, so pretty cool, pretty cool. And also we had like a yeah, small project, that project they call, I don't remember how they call, but like we have a small projects in between the big projects. So um, labs, oh, that's name. So we have labs, small labs between, and then, yeah, and then you can like, you have a lot of activities, like um, how to create scripts uh, and and run the script that we'll be running and, and um, creating the whole, um, database and fit the data there automatically just with one command. So yeah, but pretty much it, it just we have two big projects and small labs in between. Oh, cool. thanks. Um, I actually want to uh, mention um, the portfolio project. So if you go to this page, you should be able to find um, some uh, some presentation sample presentation uh you can you can get it from youtube as well so let me share the link with everyone okay let's move on to the next question uh where did you apply for jobs um i guess for, for laura it was um 
it was not a problem because she's uh, she just uh, transitioned to a different role. Uh, I guess the question is more for for Hamza here. Uh, and how many interviews did you get? I, I guess you went through job search like twice, right? You got a DA job first, and then you moved on to to data analytics engineering. Um, would you like to share some of your experience? And Laura, feel free to add anything like you know regarding uh, internal uh, transition. Yeah, for sure. So I guess uh, because we are in data industry, I love to keep data about how many jobs I apply and how many interviews and all that stuff. So uh, so in 2021, that's just after the boot camp, I started applying for jobs and I applied for 50 jobs in total. Uh, and 60% had no answer. So either it's ghosted or just rejected without anything. So that would be like 30 jobs where there's nothing. And then 28 jobs were like where I got uh, rejected. So sorry, 60% were no answers. It's completely ghosted. 28% was rejected. So that is as they review my resume said, not a good fit, or we don't need the skills we need. You don't have it. Among that, among the other jobs, so among 50 jobs, I got six interviews in the end. And then I was able to convert it into two offers where I selected one offer. So I would say I had my rate was like 4% is my application to offer rate uh, at that time. And in 2022, which is recently, so I got laid off uh, because of the recent tech crisis and I was when I got laid off, I was like, okay, my job search would be like, instead of 50 jobs, I would be applying for 100 jobs because it's just you know, like the job market is too difficult right now. But thankfully that didn't happen. I've applied to 10 jobs, uh, get rejected by seven of them. So 70%, uh, got three interviews and converted all those. In, so three interviews, I got two offers. And even the third interview, I have to stop them because I already had two offers. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to the next step. And I've, I'm pretty sure uh, if I would have continued, there is a huge chance of offer there as well. So my in my application to to offer ratio at that time was 30. percent And and you can see as you get more experience, then even if you get one year of experience because of such a huge demand in this field, your your ratios can really improve. Uh, the things that, so where did I apply for jobs? I went into LinkedIn. That was my main source of job application. And then again, in the first time when you're entering in the field, there's a lot of rejection. So I always say, make sure you apply as soon as possible, get those rejections, get, get as much, uh, ask people how your resume is looking and try different resumes and whatever then fix, then you go to the next step where there's interview, uh, like uh, programming round. So you will fail the programming round a little uh, bunch of times and you will learn from it. So so make sure you you invite failure, you like failure, because if you fail, try to research why you fail and then that's how you can improve. So I think that would be my takeaway from my whole application, uh, job applications. Yeah, I think I can add something actually. Um, as Hamza just mentioned, like the more like experience you have, more opportunity you have. So I added to my LinkedIn, I added a bootcamp and some tools we learned. And also I had a headline saying like data engineer. And then I received so many, like so many recruiters, like every week, many like asking like um inviting me to participate in a uh, interview or sending me the job descriptions everything as i was not uh, interested at the time actually it was like last year and then i was not interested so i did not uh try it i tried actually once um but then I had to remove the headline like okay i don't want to i don't want the data engineer anymore there because i am not interested right now in switch to another company um so i had to remove that so i think it's because i have some 
experience already at Telos, and then of course adding a headline saying the engineer and the tools I learned, even I don't use uh, in my work right now, but I have like the tools there, so I think they can find me very easy. So, so I think LinkedIn is your is, is is I think it's the best way to find a to find a job. So add everything you can there and. People will notice you. It will be easy to find you. Thanks, Laura. That's interesting uh, that you had to remove the data engineer title from a headline. Um, I have some uh, something I can share. You know, so if you look at uh, the 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 demand by years of experience, um, yeah, it looks like uh, for data engineering jobs. Um, there are actually most of the jobs ask for like three because typically the way you read job descriptions they will say like three plus years or five plus years right so you see like you know 32 percent asking for three plus and uh, 32 asking for like five plus um you know yeah that that that's just interesting um the job title is data engineer but companies are looking for like you know experience definitely um and uh yeah Laura, your experience, your experience was amazing, um, but I think, you know, um, you had uh, some work experience with an awesome company already, right? And that's why when you add data engineer later, um, people are very interest, in, interested in that. Um, but I think like companies, um, oh no, sorry, for, for uh, career switchers, you know, the toughest part is just getting their first job, right? Um, I think both of you had data analytics experience. Looks like if you had data analytics experience, like transition to data engineering, you will still have you know an advantage. Uh, that that's interesting. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and that's true. Actually, sorry. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, yeah, because we have like experience with data, right? And yep. then it's it's easy to switch to another uh, career in in data. So. Because everything is related, right? Um, but also, I would say, like, to find a sometimes, as I mentioned, like, sometimes it's not the engineer the name, right? So, yeah. actually, there's so many names. It's really, it's sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to find uh, what exactly you want to do. I have this problem actually right now because my, my role is machine learning engineer. And then when I try to research about machine learning engineer it's different for company to company yeah, <laughs> sometimes yeah. machine learning engineers is the, is the one who is doing the modeling sometimes it's not it's just take care of the infra so yes yeah, so, uh ah it's, it's really difficult like you need to to figure out what the name of the role we really want and read it on the job description right now uh sometimes i see the engineer but it's not exactly data engineer. It's more like I think it would be analytics engineer, like more taking care of the data that will be feeding to uh, reports. I think it would be more analytics engineer, right? Yeah, um, I, I think Hamza probably has more to say about analytics engineer. It's very hot right now, um, but I, I think it'll. You know, from my perspective, it's part of data engineering because um, analytics engineer build data warehouses. They're at, they're heavily involved in that building DBT pipelines and and stuff. They need to understand data modeling. Um, it's it's getting very hard. I because I think because of the ecosystem, um, Snowflake, DBT, Five Trend, um, yeah. But like when you look at another type of data engineering job. Uh, which is more, let's say, big data focused or lake house. And these are companies that have a little bit different like philosophy when it comes to um, solving their data challenges. Um, it all, also depends on the business, I guess. But yeah, it's uh, these are some of the new trends. Analytics engineering is getting, getting very popular. Any, uh, Hamza, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, no, I think, yeah, so when I started like two years ago, I, I don't, we don't see any job post tools for analytics engineer, but now it's pretty easy to search and, and with the tools that you mentioned, DBT, Fractron, Stitch, uh, Snowflake, uh, Redshift, it's, it's getting very popular. Uh, and it, 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 so it is basically data engineering, except the, the loading and the, 
extract part, which these tools can do for yourself. So I think it's it's a very exciting field. I think, uh, and it doesn't mean that if you're big, becoming a data engineer or if you go to a data engineering bootcamp, you cannot do analytics engineering. It's basically a subset of it. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think you will have that experience as well. But but it's getting really hot. I the amount of jobs that I see around is just too much. Cool. All right, next question. Uh, what is your job hunting experience like? Well, I guess we covered this question already. So maybe we'll just move on and uh, and so we can have more time at the end for Q&A. Uh, next question. What would be your suggestion for um, other career switchers? So I guess I can go first here. Uh, so for career switchers, I think uh, it's really important to plan your move. like. Be very diligent about how are you doing it. So, like, is your goal? So, firstly, identify a goal. Is your goal to do the switch in one year or do the switch in one and a half year? And it's really important to go to LinkedIn, send messages to people uh, who are in the field that you want to switch your career in, and and ask for recommendations. That you know, uh, what what do you do? Try to find the interest and and hopefully identify. How much time you would need to do uh, you to to switch it? So I think that is very core. Uh, my goal was to switch my career in two years. First year I tried to use online resources, they didn't work out. Second year I just went for the boot game and was able to uh, switch. The second thing I said is even in your data is everywhere. So even in the job that you are doing, there is certain aspect of data that's there. Uh, try to take those projects where that aspect you can highlight because that will really help you in interviews or in even in resume when you have to write a line about data you can say that i did that i i, I use data to do this and a lot of people think that if they are not doing a data job they're not doing anything related to data which is completely wrong the amount of trans skills that i can take from my old job to apply to data analyst job was something that was eye opener for me uh, because I thought I was not going to use anything, but there were, like Excel is everywhere. Uh, the, the, the laws that we're using data, the cleaning of data, we are doing it every day in our other jobs, but we just don't see it as that. So uh, again, big data is a different realm, but there's still a lot that you can transition from your career into it and then yeah just have a goal and try to reach out to people who have done it successfully or who are working on that field and and try to pick their brains and that what do they think and then if you want to join a boot camp that's perfect that, that's really good because it's like very planned way of executing that goal uh, where you're getting help learning skills as well as uh uh, it helps you get a job in the end as well. So, so that would be my uh, suggestion. Awesome. And Laura, um, do you have any suggestions? Well, I think that <laughs> who's at the very thing. So uh, yeah, I would just say like networking, I think is super important. Talking to other people, add, add them to the LinkedIn. Um, invite to coffee chats. Um, I think this is super important. Uh, this will help you then after the camp um, to find a job because, yeah, it's good to know when people know that you are looking for a job or career switch. People always have some advices, and then other people like can see, like, can remember about you, you know, like at. For me, at this at Telus, for example, we have a lot of um, programs for juniors. So every time I remember someone reach out to me about like joining as a junior or to switch careers, I always try to to um, to tell this person like, oh, we have the the junior position opening, so let's try to apply. I always try to help people. Um, um so yeah so for that so you need like to be talking with other people right um and as like as i was saying like have a go um research about the career research about what you need to to know 
uh, as a junior, what is the basic things you need to know to get a job? Um, yeah, and that's it, and try to apply that. So, and Thanks. yeah, I think that's it. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks. You, you mentioned like networking. I absolutely agree with you. Um, yeah, back to uh, uh, Hamza, like, because he said when when he uh, he got uh, obviously impacted by uh, by the company job cut. Um, and I was trying to connect to him with uh, with the director of a, of a bank. Uh, Hamza, I'm not sure if you remember, but I, I connected with him later and he said uh, um, he was actually very interested in you. But um, I didn't realize that you actually, 30% is really good rate, to be honest. Like you apply for 10 jobs, you get two offers. Um, yeah, you got pretty busy. And that's why uh, you, because uh, otherwise I think uh, that director was super interested in you. Yeah, yeah no, I think one of the benefits of the boot camp is that you make relationships that can help you in the future as well. So yeah, no, the, I, I was extremely lucky. I was especially in a bad market where you see layoffs happening all over the place and then i get such a response of like uh, 20 percent by offer ratio but one interview i have to stop that i already got an offer i don't want to give more interviews so i think i was extremely extremely lucky but uh but yeah that also tells uh how hard the market is right now cool all right well, that's, these are all my questions, um, prepared questions. Now let's open it up. Um, Vivian had a question uh, to you guys. Uh, what have you, uh, what you have learned in the bootcamp most, uh, among the things you learned in the bootcamp, what were the most beneficial uh, to your job search and interview? And what's not covered, uh, you know, in a bootcamp? So I guess I can go first again. So uh, so if you're talking about specifically about job search, uh, the first thing, so going from the resume to interview stage, which is the first job search stage, I think the most beneficial was the career services that comes after the bootcamp uh, with vCloud data, uh, because uh, I was, I didn't even know how to make the right resume for this, for, for data engineering career. Uh, I knew how to make it for chemical engineering, but the way you make it is completely different. So that's why uh, that's why that was the first skill that was extremely important uh, at that point. Now from interview to offer stage, uh, then all these things that you learned in the bootcamp. So uh, there were there are Python tests, there are uh, Python programming exams, there are SQL programming exams that you have to do, there are projects that you have to do. Uh, you have to talk like like in my interviews, somebody asks, okay, what do you know about Airflow? And 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 you have to show them that you know stuff, and then they they come and and cross question things, right? Like, like, okay, if this is happening, how would you fix that? And that's extremely important because in this industry where there, there is so much demand, they are looking for the right person much more because there are so many people who have just read few things and they are giving interviews. So they keep on going deeper, but thank God in the bootcamp, we did go deeper and where I was able to answer questions quite easily because of that background uh in bootcamp so all the tools that i learned i was going I, I was being asked for that uh, uh as well as well as what what was not there so one of the things that i see happening in data industry is things tools change pretty quickly so when i started my job search dbt i think was there but was not that popular and after bootcamp i have to learn all about dbt uh, afterwards, because that's the tool that's coming up right now. Now we have to think about it and learn about it. So, so I think bootcamp is there, but sometimes as you get further and further away from the bootcamp, you have to keep on learning yourself. And those topics are not covered right now in bootcamp, but, uh, but that you have to pick up that what tools are coming up and you should start learning about them to keep you relevant to the job market. Thanks Hamza. Yeah, well, we're actually uh, we we've I think we're adding DBT uh, to the curriculum, uh, so it will be available in the new cohort. That's quite exciting. Um, 
All right, next question from Jennifer. How many hours per week did you spend on the boot camp? Uh, did you do the boot camp part time or did you do the do the full time? So just so you know, we, we have a part time boot camp, but we also have um, what we call full time. But we're actually rebranding that into part time plus real project because uh, the learning schedule will be the same. Um, but we do have like because most of the students in the part time program, uh, they have a full time job. Right. So they 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 spend their weekday evenings and Saturday or sometimes Sunday uh, learning with us. Um, but for students who are actually just in transition, they're not working full time, uh, they can learn full time with us, but the learning schedule will be this, you know, they're in the same class as this part time students, but the so called full time students, they actually spent more time Monday to Friday working on uh, real company projects uh, with our consulting company so uh, that helped them uh, fill the experience gap. Yeah, but back to the question. Um, Laura Hamza like uh, you guys would like to take on this one. Yeah, I would say I, I attended the, the part-time one uh, because I was working full-time. And I think I I, I was not a good student. <laughs> I was like basically oh. doing <laughs> the minimal, like I think it was 15 hours a week. So I attended the classes and then some of the TAs or sometimes I just spent like Friday night uh, working on the labs and the activities because I was super overwhelmed. Like boot, the boot camp was super, was super overwhelmed for me. And at the same time, I, 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 I was in a new team working in new field, in a new field, like a totally different approach from my previous role. So, uh, that was super overwhelmed. So I, I, I did just spend my time like learning my work my real work and then study for the boot camp so yeah so i think i would say like 15 hours uh, at, at least a week cool how about you hamza so i guess for me I've, so when i started learning boot camp everything was new and i i don't know if shahaba remember i i contacted him, him and the first topic is linux shell scripts and everything and i'm like i have no clue uh, what's happening and 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 is it is it possible to skip this topic because I remember just looking at the line of code and I'm like will I ever know what this means because I yeah I can spend a half an hour understanding one line but then the second line comes and shell scripts are like 50 lines long so I remember I I hated the boot camp when it started because it was just so much work. Uh, I think on average in the end, I was spending like 20 hours a week. I, I was also doing it part time. I had a full time job, uh, but I remember uh, coming back from the job. I just went straight in, started uh, re learning about it. And but this stuff is so interesting that you don't remember when the time pa passes. So but overall, I think 20 hours I used to uh, go to the lectures, then rewatch the lectures because I'm very slow learner. So it's like 12 hours right there and then eight hours of labs and practice that I can do. Uh, so yeah, 20 hours per week would be my time. I'm glad you said that, Hunza, because I, in the beginning, I knew nothing about Linux, scripts, anything. So I was totally lost. I was, I had the same feeling. <laughs> I feel like this is going to be a big topic, a popular topic uh, when we uh, do the alumni re reunion, because I've heard from other students saying that um, they did really enjoy the beginning. Uh, and there there were students just frustrated, uh, who frustrated like throughout the boot camp. And, uh, and at that time, I think obviously there are a lot of things we can improve in the boot camp um, and the support as well. Uh, but when everyone got the job, I think they're super, super happy. But yeah, I, I agree. Like the boot camp is not for the you know uh, faint-hearted because uh, um, it was designed to be pretty go pretty deep. Um, you guys probably didn't join the pre-boot camp, but now we have the pre-boot camp, so we sort of um, made the the the, the mission come a bit more uh, strict. So I think ideally Python and uh, and SQL are prerequisites, right? And then uh, I think Eric also just added advanced Python programming. Um, but if you absolutely come from no coding background, it will be a very tough program. Um, but yeah, but we're here to torture everyone and to until they uh they they can complete the project. I think 
Um, the challenge with learning data engineering is that there's just so many tools you need to learn. It could end up being like you learn a bunch of tools, but you still don't know how, how to make everything work. Uh, so I think after you complete the, like most of the students actually start to gain more confidence when they complete the midterm. So even though they still like not, not expert on every one of those topics, but at least they completed something end to end and it, that's a sense of achievement. And then, um, and I think start, things will start to get a lot better once you, you start to have more confidence. Um, yeah, that was interesting. Um, let's move on to the next question. Um, from uh, Chayen, Chayen uh, sorry uh, if I mispronounced your name, uh, being that you two were already established in your previous career uh, before switching to data engineering, were you concerned that you might experience a decrease in pay because you're uh, starting at the bottom again in a new field? Uh, that's a really good question. And yeah, I, that's I a... Amza was... Yeah. You know, a typical example, because he was leading a team. And remember, you told me of leading a team of seven or 10 people already, right? In mechanical engineering. Right, right. right. Yeah, so, yeah, I was really leading a team of 10 people uh, in my career. And yeah, that, so this was one of the main questions that haunted me at nights uh, when I was going through the boot camp is, I'm working so hard in the end. I'm earning less money because I have to start from the bottom again. Uh, so why am I doing it? Uh, so I guess how I answered it was was two. So two things. Number one, uh, I knew that if I have to do change my career, and the reason why I changed my career was because it wasn't interesting. I cannot see innovation happening in that career. I felt like I will just keep on doing the exact same thing again and again for years and years. Uh, so that's where my problem was. And the reason why I said I needed two years, that was my target, because the problem is, as I was growing in that career, the salary was increasing as well. And I didn't want salary to increase so much that it kills me to take the uh, to to go to the bottom again. So I'm like, okay, two years, I have to figure it out because if I stay in this career for five years, then the then the difference becomes just too much that I will start having different ideas. Uh, so, and when I ended up taking the cut, I think my salary cut was 40%, so 35%. Uh, that from my old job to the job that I got was 35% lower salary, but but I knew one thing and and, from my answers, you would see that I love planning. So the day when I started my data engineering bootcamp, I made a five-year plan saying, I know how much this company is going to give me raise. And, and I, because I was on a man, I was a manager, I knew that, you know, that would be my next position. I took the salaries of the, what I'm going to earn in five years. And I said, even after that salary cut I'm going to take, I'm going to make sure that I made that equivalent salary in next five years. So I will grow in the new career so fast that I can I can recover whatever I lost. And that plan gives me a lot of hope. And, and thank God, like right now I am already two years in you know, one and a half year in my career. And I already have makeup for three years. So the, the plan is going perfect right now. Uh, but but anybody who has that concern that their salary is going to drop, it's going to drop. But I can tell you, if you make a five-year plan, you will see why data engineering is the right choice. Because the salary increase in all the other fields are not even equivalent to what you see in, or even close to what you see in data engineering. And if you get more senior into it. So that was my thing. Thanks. Um, yeah, for me, I think, um, maybe I didn't mention that in, my ex in the beginning, but, um, I was not concerned because I was a newcomer to Canada. So I was, I did already a big change in my life and I was in the beginning of my career in Canada. So actually I, I i can say like my career started when i joined telus 
as a junior data analyst. So they gave me the opportunity to, to join the company knowing absolutely nothing about that kind of data. I, I used to work with healthcare, researching healthcare, so totally different, so nothing related to that. And when I decided that I, I like something else because I, I decided data analysis was not for me because I, I didn't like the presentations part. So, and to be a data analyst, I would need to make presentations. So I decided I need to go somewhere more technical. I didn't know what before, but then I, when I realized, okay, data engineer is what I want to do, still data, but more technical. So when I decided that and I joined the bootcamp and then everything happened at the same time, switched to a new team. And then after the bootcamp, I, I had the opportunity to switch as a data engineer. Uh, actually, we did, as I did, I, I attended this bootcamp. That was the reason why I, I, I received a, a raise. Um, so my salary was pretty low already because I wasn't junior data analyst, but because I had the bootcamp and I had the knowledge and skills to be a data engineer, that was the reason why my manager could argue with the director and stuff to get me a raise because she needed to, to, to hire a data engineer or a machine learning engineer in the case. And then she said, for me to hire a data engineer, that's the amount of money like I would need to pay for that person. So why not just increase the salary, uh, lower salary, right? Mm -hmm. So actually that was a reason for me to, to have uh, a raise. Um, but I don't know, maybe my situation is different or, or maybe not, right? So we are in Canada, we have so many um, newcomers. So maybe that's another that situation for someone here. Thanks for sharing your story. That was very interesting. Uh, well, there's another question um, from Samuel. Uh, within your cohort, how great uh, was the variation in skills among the students at the beginning of the bootcamp? Um, are they mostly experienced IT professionals or many with little to no experience or somewhere in between? Uh, maybe you can speak for your cohort. I, I couldn't remember. I, which cohort you guys are in. Um, I didn't share my, my experience as well working with, I think I, I, I'm more familiar with cohort three or four. Yeah, but I'll I'll leave it to you guys to 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 start, yeah. So I guess I'll, I'll go, so Laura, go ahead. No, I'm trying to remember actually, I think, um, I, I think we don't have like we didn't have so many people like from IT, right? I think we just like a few. Yeah, that was what I thought, right? Because I remember you guys were in the you know in the, in the early cohorts, um, like you know a year and a half and two years ago, right? Um, in the recent cohort that I I know I, a student that I worked with, um, we start to see more more folks from IT. That was interesting, and that's why in our career guide we also um had one section on like you know how to switch from IT uh, to data engineering because we start to see more demand coming from uh, folks you know from IT support from database administrator from people who work in traditional uh, ETL they're working with you know kind of enterprise tools um, but they would like to switch over and learn more open source tools um, I definitely see more people coming from IT background, uh, but coming from IT background doesn't really mean they have all the prerequisite, right? Because um, unless you're software engineers or, or you work with ETL already, uh, there are a lot of people coming from a DBA background, for example. And we have like in one cohort, we had two data warehouse engineers, um, but they mainly work with Microsoft and also Oracle um, and uh, yeah, Oracle Exadata, I remember. Um, so, you know, I think everyone's learning path will be a little bit different, even though you follow the same curriculum, right? Because for, if you come from a data warehouse and database background, uh, you absolutely need to learn more about Apache Spark and Python. Those are the things that you don't know, use a lot in your previous jobs. 
and uh and when you start to look for data engineering jobs you your past experience will be uh, your advantage because you had ETL background already, but you're using like Spark open source uh, to do uh, to work with distributed systems and you can focus on streaming data analytics and stuff like that. But there are also people from um, um, like just the traditional IT support background and pick up coding is definitely the first uh, step. Uh, so you need to learn Python and SQL. Uh, and even for DBAs, um, they're very good with, um, you know, the database back end. Um, they, they, they know SQL optimization really well, but on a day-to-day -day basis, they don't really analyze data. They don't really like do a lot of data transformations, right? Um, so even, even, even though you know SQL, but it doesn't mean uh, you can write data pipelines to, to, you know, to process data really well. So those are the experience they need to add as well. Um, we at the very beginning we had more students who uh, don't know coding uh, for example Hamza is probably one of those examples but I think in in the recent cohorts um, we sort of required the student to know uh, at least Python and SQL you don't need to have expert level you know knowledge but you know going even going through pre-boot camp will be very helpful so that sort of reduce uh, the amount of friction you have uh, when you go through the boot camp um, yeah, that that's my uh, my comment on this. But Laura, like, do you guys anything you guys would like to share? Because I, I know you guys work with students, like your classmates more closely, right? Because when you work on project, you probably know each other better. Yeah, I think I, if I, I remember correctly, I, I saw a few IT experience, IT professionals, uh, the fun person, uh, works for Shawa right now, Nat, he was in my team. And then uh, I remember th there were some who were just computer science bachelor degree, like they just completed their bachelor degree and, and went in there. And there were some which are like me, uh, had no idea what's happening uh, and had to learn everything from the start. I think most of the people who said, <laughs> I remember my my final project, like we yeah. were a, in a group project it was three and like we three, like we knew absolutely nothing like well, but the past experience was nothing related to it. So yeah, we struggled a lot, but we did it. <laughs> yeah, I remember the presentation was pretty good, actually. Um, yeah. Cool. And also, um, I recently I start to see more data scientists uh, wanting to switch to data engineering. That was kind of interesting. Um, maybe it was cohort two or cohort three. We had a student, um, actually a couple of students coming from data science background. But there was one student I remember really well because I helped him with uh, the interview. He he's from the United States. He got three offers: one from Spark Post, which is a marketing campaign like platform. The other one is Delta Airline. He got a, an offer from Deloitte as well. Uh, but most interestingly, he got interviews. That was, uh, I, I think, uh, twenty end of twenty twenty one, um, and uh, he actually had interviews with like all the big tech, um, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Netflix. But he didn't get offers from uh, those companies. But he did get three offers, and he picked Delta Airline. Um, yeah, and he has really strong like data science background already. So some of those are machine learning engineering positions as well. But uh, I start to see more data scientists, data science folks. Maybe they don't like 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 Laura. They don't like presentations. Um, but definitely as part of the career path, there are people who want to go more technical, and data engineering is definitely uh, booming right now. So yeah, we'll see more demand. And, uh, and another question we we often got was, um, is data science um, not as, you know, the market trend is not as good as before? I, I, I would say no, because, you know, they go hand in hand. Like if data engineering is growing, data science is absolutely growing. But it's just like when you look at the market, when you look at people around you, it's just more competitive. There are more people doing data science. There are more schools, you know, providing data science training. Uh, they feel like it's very crowded, right? That's the truth. Um, but data engineering is, the thing with data engineering is that there are a lot of people who work in data engineering, but they if would, they would like to get into a job that does modern data engineering, there's still a lot of new tools they need to pick up, right? 
because you, you could have been doing DBAs or working with database systems for 10 years, uh, but if you would like to go work as a big data developer, you almost feel like you're starting from scratch. Like you have to pick up Python, Scala, Spark, and all the new stuff in cloud. So, um, and that's why I think it's a very good window right now to, to consider becoming a data engineer. And of course, it, it needs to line up with your uh, career objective. Cool. Um, and very insightful answer, thanks. I'm a senior associate scientist at a major pharma. Oh, cool. Yeah. Thanks for sharing your uh, your experience. Oh, you know Tolu? Yeah, that was Tolu. He, he's uh, he's the person I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that you know him. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, I got a question. There's Go ahead. Um, a lot of the fan companies ask on they focus so much on DSA, which is data structures and algorithms, even though most of the companies don't really use that much advanced DSA. How much of those DSA questions are you seeing um, with the Canadian companies? Like, are they really drilling the data engineers on DSAs or they, are they just touching on the Python at a very high level and not going deep down? Uh, my personal experience, um, I've been doing this for quite a few years now, but we are more in consulting, so I don't go to interviews, but I worked with many students. Uh, I remember a student in the, in the U.S., um, not which is not Tolu, um, but that student got interview from Facebook as well. That's an actual data engineer, uh, interview from Facebook. Um, the interview question was actually not DSA related. Uh, they gave him a take-home take assignment and... Uh, um, and ask him to to solve a particular challenge, and and definitely you'll get SQL and sometimes Python related interview questions. SQL is sort of like a must have. Uh, like Laura, Hamza, you guys can share your experience, but uh, a lot of companies will give you SQL test, right? Because the thing with data engineering is that you're applying these programming tool uh, to solve practical challenges. So even even if you can, you're very good with data structure, but if you work as analytics engineer building modern data warehouse doing data ingestion like that's not required like you need to be very good at sql um and sometimes the questions are like data infrastructure related i uh, hamza mentioned like airflow but i remember student getting um even questions about how do you deploy air airflow cluster right the student would like oh we learned this in a boot camp you know we 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 deployed uh, airflow in a docker container but the question was like there are different ways of deploying airflow right in in in, in production and uh, uh and they were looking at her portfolio project and and asking very specific questions about um you know how they actually deployed the the airflow cluster um and yeah so in big tech i feel like no matter what you have to do the dsa and uh so which means uh, you can apply for a data engineering job and you don't come from data engineering background if you can pass the DSA and if you're good at SQL, you can still get a data engineer job um, with most of the you know big tech company. But if you if we are talking about getting a data engineer job in the banks, uh, in telecom or you know in because most of the jobs are from from you know other regular industries, right? So I don't think DSA is is a big deal. Um, most of the companies, will give you SQL and Python test um, from my experience. And sometimes they give you Spark test as well. They even open source um, their, their, their questions. Like they, I remember uh, we had a couple of students who had uh, interviews with the same company uh, over the, the last uh, you know three years. And their interview question is exactly the same. And everyone can find that on, 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 on GitHub. And every, every time when I looked at it, it was, okay, the question hasn't changed. Um, but very interestingly, they know, you know, you, you can find that and even, you know, get prepared even before you start an interview. But interestingly, like, it's not about, you know, how how well prepared, like, you know, you are or you, you have some solutions already. Like, when you actually present the solution to them, they will go deep and ask you questions. How did you make this decision? And why did you do it this way? Because when it comes to data engineering, there might be a hundred different tools um, that allow you to do the same thing, 
And, uh, and sometimes it's an optimization problem. Like companies will ask you, it is okay that you can use all five different tools and uh, it doesn't matter. Like they, they don't expect you to know the best solution because the best solution, there's always constraints. Like, is it the best solution for this company for this particular question, right? What is the budget constraint? Like you're not always going with um, the best tools, you know, because those might be very costly when it comes to implementation, right? Um, so budget is constrained and sometimes the performance, right? How the latency requirement, right? Or sometimes maybe latency is not a big issue. So and the size of the data, how scalable you want that to be. And that's why even they keep it open source, like the interview questions. But when they actually ask you questions, they can learn a lot about you, you know, and how much do you actually know about data engineering? Because every single day you're making some sort of small decision, you know, and they're looking for people who can make a sound decision most of the time and that's important like you don't go to your managers and say hey how, how which tool should i use how do i make this decision and you know that's probably not a not a good sign but yeah hamza like do, laura do you guys have anything to add i guess yeah the, as you said i think my experience is pretty similar i there's only one interview where i got asked about data structures and uh, algorithm question and that was Scala uh, and I remember they, st they started asking me about all this stuff I didn't know that uh, that well anyways so I didn't uh, the interview didn't go well but but other than that I think always there's a SQL test uh, and in one company I got a Python test where I have to present them the AWS architecture how I will make the architecture all together so cloud skills were important as well but uh definitely SQL is the most common test I saw. Uh and yeah, even one company I got referred to this company and they were like and and after the interview, I'm like, okay, what's the next step? Should I get a SQL test? And they're like, no, because you you're you had such a high reference, we don't need to know you about your SQL. And I was like, okay, is this the right company even? Because I'm like, I need SQL test. Like this is not right if I'm not doing a SQL test. So always, always there is a SQL test coming up or a Python test coming up. That's true. Yeah. I um, I did one interview last year and yeah, they require a, a SQL test and a Python one. Um, the Python one was pretty hard, actually. They were asking about the big O notation, but like the SQL one was, was normal, like pretty. Um, easy not complicated cool yeah but regardless i think uh we need to get prepared for the dsa type of uh you know interview questions right um and because definitely uh you'll come across some of these and some some employers will even ask for live coding uh or pair programming um, we start to see more of those um but i think for data engineering um sql python are still the most important and uh company may ask you, you know, we start to see more like end to end type of take home assignment, because um, it's kind of hard to tell if you can actually do the work. Um, so they will ask you like give you a data set. Um, but interesting thing about data engineering in interview is that, you know, to test your knowledge and skills, like, it's not like data science, they can just give you a data set, and then you can just use Colab or Jupyter Notebook, right? You don't have to worry about tools. But with data engineering, programming languages is not the most important. Like, you know, they, they will say like, yeah, use SQL or use Spark, use Python, whatever tool you want to use, right, to solve this challenge. But then they will say, okay, you need to have a database. Then you have to install the database yourself. Uh, so you do that in a Docker container, right? They, they may want you to scale that, then you probably have to work with, you know, Databricks or AWS somewhere. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, you have to use the cloud. So yeah, there are definitely more tools you need to be comfortable with, even in, in order to complete an interview, uh, interview assessment. Oh, um, any other questions? Thank you, Jennifer. And thanks for all the great questions. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, so 
again, um, I'd highly recommend everyone to read um, the, the Data Engineer Career Guide because um, I, I think we, uh, our faculty team has put, really put a lot of effort into this. Uh, all the tools you need to learn, um, we've sort of open sourced it. It's our curriculum uh, and you can follow that. We had a lot of details uh, and recommendations as well. Uh, it's definitely state of art, uh, you know, things like DBT, analytics engineering, uh, we touched on reverse ETL, um, all the new concepts, um, but definitely this field is moving so fast. And uh, there are a lot of legacy tools that you don't even need to worry too much about because most of the companies are moving to the cloud. And um, but, you know, this trend is sort of also hurting the traditional IT department, right? Because when you move to the cloud, uh, the need for uh, the traditional IT roles will definitely decrease. Um, but hopefully this career guide can be helpful. And again, I would like to thank uh, Laura and uh, Hamza for spending uh, an hour and a half with us. And uh, yes, it was very insightful. Thank you so much for uh, for joining this panel. And uh, I'll see everyone next time. Great, thank you guys. Thanks. Thank you.